Cyberpunk 2077 new DLC. I don't know how this is possible because CDPR Red stopped all development on this game. And if this is new DLC, I wonder if it's already gonna have Awoke influences in it. Cyberpunk 2077 just got a new DLC, but it's probably not what most of you expect, as this is a $20 sound pack DLC. It's definitely a bit of a strange one, but honestly, after testing this out for my- A sound pack DLC for $20? That's arguably more insane than Bethesda's 20 minute $10 DLC mission. Myself, I think quite a few of you may end up interested in it, but the game is also dead. Apparently, you've probably seen the reports that Cyberpunk 2077 has finished development, yes. but it definitely could be more on- We knew this a long time ago, by the way. This is not new in the slightest. The way, as the recent earnings report from CDPR has given us some idea of what we could expect next. And I think CDPR may even be teasing mod tools coming to Cyberpunk 2077 here. But either way, modding is looking like a bright spot in the future of Cyberpunk 2077, as I also had the opportunity to test the Cyberpunk multiplayer mod, which I'll be wow. talking about a bit later in this video. But with the Cyberpunk 2077 display, you can also have a bright spot on your wall. No, yourself. thank you. But looking first, Cyberpunk 2077 just got a $20 immersive sound DLC. This is made by Embody Audio, who creates these immersive game packs for a wide array of different games out there. But this was made at least partially in partnership with CDPR, as CDPR has been advertising this release, and as the title does suggest, it makes the sound of Cyberpunk 2077 far more immersive, using head tracking as well as a surround setup to cater to was the sound previously bad? I kind of don't really think so. So yeah, this seems a little bit unnecessary. And 20 bucks for sound? Yeah, this seems bad currently. Do that, with the idea being you don't need some crazy surround sound setup to have this work and instead just need a pair of headphones. I don't know about you, but that to me feels messy. It's actually kind of nice to know from which direction it's coming from, but man, that felt messy to me at least. The way this works is it's $20 to own forever, but alternatively you can just try a two week free trial right now, where you're gonna download the Embody software that you'll just run side by side with Cyberpunk 2077 to enhance the sounds. You can just run this as is, but with a few steps, you can open up several more features. You can use your phone to map- <laughs> Wait, what, what was that just now? With a few steps, you can open up several more- <laughs> Features. That is hilarious. That is still hilarious. They fixed a lot of bugs, but there are still bugs in Cyberpunk. That is hilarious. You can use your phone to map out your ears. Like, yeah, literally, this is measuring my ear distance to the front of my face to create a personal HRTF, which will then be imported. And if you have a web Sounds like a uh, full-blown BS, by the way, but, you know, just saying. Webcam, you can also set up head tracking. So basically, your webcam will monitor your head's position and dynamically change the audio depending on which direction your face is facing. So, okay, that's all really cool, but how does it actually feel when you're playing? Awesome! <laughs> Classic stealth. No, no, this, this doesn't seem okay, okay? Some sounds are just way too high, some sounds are not high enough, and there's too much outside ambience, okay? I want to play my game and feel it, uh, and have it feel real, but not real enough. What I noticed when using this one is a lot of the high octane action sequences or even just driving around with a ton of sounds around you weren't all that different compared to vanilla Cyberpunk 2077. No, nah, this just no that that okay now the surround sound is making I, I don't like it I, I'm not I, I don't like it it feels a lot awkward
things are of course a bit toned down due to this being filmed and re-rendered and posted on YouTube, but even as I was playing this myself, I found using the sound pack doesn't necessarily make things sound better, it just makes things sound different. Certain sounds that are normally much quieter are now a bit Yeah, this definitely doesn't even seem close to being worth 20 bucks. The CDPR running out of that good old DSG money, or what's happening here? Louder, and for me, a lot- Can Daddy Blackrock just give them a little bit more so they can finish that office in, I don't know, some kind of folk part of America, and we can just call CDPR dead and forgotten and, you know, get this all over with? Because that's gonna be the future. ...more noticeable. <laughs> When you're driving around or taking on a group of enemies head on, this doesn't really have a huge impact, but this DLC did yield really cool results in two specific examples. When you're surrounded by enemies, you can really differentiate between their locations while using this one. That plane is so funny. Instead of it just being, okay, I'm in combat, there's a ton going on, I felt like I could almost pinpoint the exact location of every enemy around me because I could just hear them. And I could hear some of the minor details. I could hear them talking, I could hear them reloading their weapon. And honestly, I didn't even realize enemies made that many different noises until I started using this one. But where this DLC sound pack will truly shine is playing the game a bit slower. And really, when doing some of the stealth-focused content in Cyberpunk 2077, the immersive sound pack brings a major upgrade. Walking slow. <laughs> That's funny. Through environments with this on just made everything far easier to track. It almost just feels like your senses are more in tune with the game than ever before. Well, I guess that was kind of the point to a degree, right? Particularly when there's music playing. Like here, I can almost pinpoint exactly where that music is. What in the fuck? I can even hear one of the enemies shadow boxing or hitting air nearby. Yeah, this is way too much. This is just absolutely way too much. Because this makes me feel that walls don't exist. And I'm pretty sure walls do exist. Now, if this was an acolyte episode, yeah, I would, I would, I would believe that sound just travels through walls unobstructed. Why not? Honestly, what are walls even made of? Who knows? But anyway, yeah, this does not seem good. This seems like a complete waste of twenty bucks currently. Wow. Bye. As I move into this next room, you can hear the more gradual fade of the music. It's far more like a lifelike dissipation compared to vanilla cyberpunk where things are a lot more jittery. And through the sound during some of the more tense stealth missions- Yeah, this sounds just- it's- it's way too much. No, this is horrible. Vincent, I gotta say, this makes Cyberpunk 2077 a dramatically more frightening game. a bit more some of the sounds were a yeah, lot that slightly scared me a little bit that's true but again that's not because the well the ambience was kind of frightening ish inspiring right but man it's just a lot more intense so when those scary stealth missions came into play they were a lot scarier some of the action scenes definitely do get some improvements as well though it feels like things just get a bit more intense with the sound pack on it's almost like the gunfights are more impactful on your senses and overall it definitely feels easier to place enemies around you but it also serves to highlight some oddities with the base cyberpunk 2077 sound mixing sometimes things just sound sort of odd almost like levels are maxing out Ah! 
I wouldn't say using the sound pack is a comprehensive sound upgrade. At some points, it definitely sounds a bit worse compared to vanilla Cyberpunk. The head tracking feature is definitely cool, so if I look sideways, all of the sound from Cyberpunk 2077 will play out of my right ear cup, because that's the ear that's pointed towards the screen, and that's where all the sounds are originating from. And, well, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, this seems like a waste of oxygen. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool feature. It's not really 20 that bucks. Functional. Like, when are you looking- Dude, I would feel bad honestly selling this for five bucks. 20 bucks? Ain't no way, chief. Absolutely ain't no way around while playing a video game. Most of the time, you're just looking at the screen you're playing the video game on. So while cool, I wouldn't really consider that a selling point. So overall, I would say this one is a ton of fun with stealth builds, but in general, it's not going to be for everyone, and honestly, I don't even think it's for me. The $20 sound DLC is definitely not some comprehensive sound upgrade for Cyberpunk 2077, but it is a pretty cool stealth add-on. So if you're doing a new playthrough with a stealth build, hey, try the two-week free trial and maybe this one's worth it for you. But what is next for Cyberpunk 2077? Over the past few weeks, a ton of reports have come forward saying that Cyberpunk 2077 development has ended. The source for all of this was the recent CD Projekt Red earnings call, which showed that the developers on Cyberpunk 2077 is now at zero. And but this was an announcement that we knew very long ago. I think it's been half a year since we know that uh, this is it for Cyberpunk, that no one should be technically working on it any longer. Later on in the call, the CEO clarifies this even further, saying, When it comes to updates, there could be small things happening in terms of maintenance, but we're not planning anything major. So basically, it's pretty much done. More maintenance than anything else. And there definitely are a few things that need maintaining. In the last update, the new Crystal Coat feature was broken for cars, so now the colors don't populate correctly anymore, as well as FSR 3 was supposed to come to Cyberpunk 2077 yeah. at some point. It has begun rolling out more and more to other games on PC, so hopefully we'll see this soon, but we don't really know when. And this too wouldn't necessarily well, that would be, cool. be a full-on CDPR project, but instead likely AMD stuff. Man, I... I was going to say here when I saw, uh, saw this, I didn't recognize it's Starfield, but I'm like, this looks not good. What the hell is this? <laughs> and then I noticed, oh, wait, it's Starfield. Likely AMD stepping in to nice. help out. There's some Cyberpunk spin-off projects in the works right now, so I wouldn't be shocked if we see a smaller update that ties into some of those. Basically just what they did with Edge Runners. CDPR is working with some mobile companies, as well as they are working on a live-action piece of Cyberpunk content. So whenever those things drop, I imagine we could see something in the game. Do, do you think a live-action piece of Cyberpunk can actually succeed? I think the anime was great, obviously. Everyone thinks that. If you haven't seen it, you probably should. It's great. You know, it's right there next to Arcane and other uh, other great things. But a live action cyberpunk thing? I oh no, that sounds just like something that Amazon is willing to lose money on, and it's probably gonna be again. Well, we're talking about either Netflix or Amazon, and Amazon is heroically Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Have I told you about the time I killed an ice troll in under ten seconds? And Netflix is, well, you know what Netflix is. And all the rest is no way even remotely close to better. The, the worst case scenario is probably that this cyberpunk thing is going to be made in, uh, in collaboration with Disney. Which means, holy, man, it was yesterday that it dropped it, you know, uh, Veritas stuff. Or now it's called Duo Keith Media Group or whatever. Dead. <laughs> They literally admit, the, the guy literally just said, oh yeah, if you're white, the Disney's never gonna hire you, have fun. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are, as long as you're white, that's not right. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. And again, with all the things that are happening with CDPR Red, I think, I, I can't wait until CDPR Red starts doing things, because the way that things are happening... It's going to be a disaster. It's going to be an unmitigated disaster when they finally start actually rolling things out. I can't wait for it. They just completely destroy, uh, destroyed themselves, most likely game, but also maybe mods? A few weeks ago now, official mod support was added for The Witcher 3 with the release of Redkit. This is a pretty big deal. This is almost exactly what Bethesda does, where the tools used to make the game, kind of, I mean, they're technically an edited version of those tools, but those tools are now made available to modders so they could start adding in custom quests, some custom animations, and more. And while this is super exciting for The Witcher 3, that's a very old game at this point. The modding scene is definitely on the tail end as we look ahead to the next Witcher, but many fans immediately 
immediately began to wonder if this too could come to Cyberpunk 2077, as this does have a bigger modding scene and it's a far newer game. Unfortunately, you can't just port the red kit from The Witcher 3 to Cyberpunk. A lot of additional work would need to be Dude, Cyberpunk was made on a completely separate engine, I think, from Witcher. Done, but that may be happening, as during this recent earnings call, somebody asked this exact question to the CEO, to which he does respond. When it comes to any any future things, Cyberpunk or anything related, I mean, uh, once we have something on our hands, we will definitely talk about that. But in general, I would indicate that uh, uh, community created content by means of mods uh, enabled and powered by uh, really well prepared tools is something we are fond of and uh, and we do see value in that uh, uh, in how we interact in the fan with the fans. To me, that response makes it seem like they do want to add mod support to Cyberpunk 2077 and are likely doing so right now. But at the same time, since this is a work in progress and will take some time to get- Do you think many companies are gonna uh, now approach uh, approach gaming with the, the Bethesda thing? It's like, oh, paid mods, you make the thing, you earn a little bit of money, but we take the lion's shit and we now make perpetually money through doing nothing. Do you think a lot of companies are going to start doing that? Because if they do, they're going to kind of rely on modders fixing it. Always when they release a game, it's going to be like the Bethesda shtick all over again. Man, that does not sound appealing in the slightest, honestly get done, they don't have anything to talk about right now. But that's my interpretation. Let me know in the comments down below, how did you take that one? And either way, modders are doing things with Cyberpunk 2077, even without official mod tools. I was recently able to participate in one of the public tests for CyberMP, the Cyberpunk 2077 multiplayer mod. And here, I was able to play Cyberpunk 2077 multiplayer on a server with a ton of other players from all over the world. And this was shockingly good. Like, the sync between one player to another was just way better than it had any right being from a single developer mod project. During this, we organized eh, it still doesn't mean it's actually good. Races together, we got into all kinds of hijinks and deathmatch, of course. And all around, it was just a ton of fun doing open world activities in Night City with a bunch of other people. And that was a couple of months ago. This footage I'm showing you here is old now. Even further tests mm. and even further refinement have okay, occurred okay. since then. At some point, I do plan on making a full video on this experience, so get subscribed for that. But also, check out CyberMP for yourself. I'll have some links to their Discord as well as other social channels if you want to get a Interesting, interesting. Closer look at the upcoming mod. As well as, of course, Cyberpunk 2077 moving to zero developers isn't entirely a bad thing as, yeah, CDPR has to move on. We can also see how 407 developers are now working on the next Witcher game known as Polaris, with CDPR saying we're nearing the end of- Oh man, can you imagine a Vogue Witcher game? That's gonna be haunted. Considering, man, considering what we saw happen with the Witcher TV series, I mean, the moment, I forgot his name, but the main star of Henry Cavill, I almost forgot his name. The, the moment Henry Cavill was a single step outside of that crap, it turned to, it just self-imploded real fast. Man, see how fast things just happen? He was the only one who actually cared about the source material of The Witcher. Oof, oof. I really wonder what's going to happen. Do you think it's possible? Th there must be some kind of Vogue Witcher game coming up with a with some kind of girl character that just bosses him around constantly and is the bestest ever and whatnot and it's actually her series and it's probably some kind of self-insert from, from someone. It must happen. There is no world where this doesn't happen of the pre-production phase this year, and we're planning to enter the production phase later this year. And even the Cyberpunk 2077 sequel with Orion is already at over 50 devs, as the con- well, Orion's at the, you know, starting point of what's ever happening, so it's fine. ...concepting phase progresses on that project. We are kind of in that weird lull period for CDPR right now. They won't have any more games for us for a couple of years at least, but there seemingly will be other things. Mod tools could come to Cyberpunk 2077. We will likely get at least one mobile game. And of course, that Cyberpunk live action project will get- Mobile game? Ugh, not interested. Anyway, that was Juice Head. Uh, I, I think CDPR is gonna be done. Like, they're already releasing a $20 goddamn sound pack that doesn't really make anything better. That's not good. Anyway, bye!